question for you. What do an old lady picking tea on a Turkish mountainside? A hip food truck owner putting the finishing touches to a meat-free burger? Or a glamorous Parisian boutique owner arranging a display of silk scarves have in common? Well, besides being masters of their craft, the common link is the fact that they're all touching something that originated in China. Chinese brands such as TikTok, DJI, and Huawei are taking the world by storm, even if there is the odd controversy as they do so. As Chinese goods and services increasingly become the natural choice for people around the world, it's easy to forget that it wasn't always this way. I was much like any other child of my generation, growing up surrounded by cheaply constructed but probably overpriced plastic toys like Barbie, Polly Pocket, and My Little Pony. During the countless hours I spent playing with these toys, I noticed again and again that they were embossed with three small, mystical words. Made in China. Lively debate continues on just how far reform should go, just how rich is too rich. In 1978, when Deng Xiaoping ended decades of isolation and began opening up China to the world, Western companies were all too happy to start moving their production eastwards to take advantage of China's huge and ultimately cheap workforce. This has led to people of mine, my parents, and even my grandparents' generation viewing China's main contribution to the world as being piles of cheap plastic ta that you find in discount stores across western high streets in the weeks leading up to Christmas and in landfills the weeks after. But this is simply not true. In this video, we're going to talk about all the things that China has contributed to the world. But before we start talking about tofu, e-cigarettes and TikTok, we have to go back a couple of millennia. The Greeks, the Romans, and pretty much every European ruler that succeeded them spent most of the last 2,000 years fighting each other and ignoring the sleeping giant in the east. Meanwhile, the self-proclaimed Middle Kingdom was busy coming up with the four great inventions of ancient China. These include the compass, which must have come in handy when navigating around such a huge country. But more importantly, it meant sailors across the world could stop using the stars to navigate and instead use a little pointy needle. The compass gave birth to the age of exploration and allowed European explorers to go around the world conquering new lands and screwing over existing ones, including China. But more on that later. The Chinese also came up with paper and printing both of which were useful for spreading the emperor's word across the Middle Kingdom. And also gunpowder, which must have been pretty handy for defending the reclusive country from outsiders. However, thanks to the Silk Road, China was not completely cut off from the rest of the world. And some of its more peaceful inventions, such as, well, silk, were highly sought after in Europe. Silk is still cherished by people of stature today. But it is one of China's other great discoveries that is most ingrained into the culture of ordinary people around the world. Tea. Tea is the second most widely consumed beverage in the world after water. It was first cultivated over 5,000 years ago in the mountains of Yunnan. It was actually originally used as a cooking vegetable, but soon became the national drink of China. Although its journey didn't stop there. In the 1600s, Dutch traders brought tea to Europe, where it exploded in popularity. And as the British Empire spread across the world, they took it with them wherever they invaded, increasing demand for the humble tea leaf, which at this point was still only grown in China. The British soon grew tired of the amount of silver they were sending China's way in return for the tea, and decided to switch their payment to the opium that they were growing in India. Understandably, the emperor wasn't too happy about his nation becoming addicted to the drug and banned opium imports, which led to the infamous Opium Wars. Even after emerging victorious, Britain didn't stop there and instead sent in this guy to steal some tea plants and expert tea growers, which he then smuggled across the border to Darjeeling, India, so the British East India Trading Company could start growing tea themselves. I would like to take this opportunity to personally apologize for all the ways my ancestors screwed over the world. If you're from the US, UK, or many other Western countries, then you'll probably be familiar with the next item on this list. 
It usually comes in paper boxes containing sweet, yet salty foodstuffs masquerading as Chinese food. Anyone who's been to China will know it has one of the most unique and varied food cultures in the world. So maybe it's not too hard to imagine that this so-called Chinese cuisine is China's way of getting its own back on the West. Of course, I am joking. Well, kind of. And you can find good food outside of China cooked up by real Chinese people in one of the many Chinese districts across the world. According to Wikipedia, Chinatowns are ethnic enclaves of Chinese people located outside of mainland China. The first was established in Manila way back in 1594, but some of the most famous are located in the US, which experienced a lot of Chinese migration during the 1800s thanks to the gold rush, the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad, and a demand for cheap labor after the abolition of slavery. These days, Chinatowns are in a way a relic of a bygone era. And sadly, many of them have started to disappear, become run down or overly commercialized. But despite the demise of these Chinatowns, the Chinese are continuing to influence the makeup of Western cities in a whole different way. At one time in its history, Beijing was famous for its flocks of privately owned bicycles. Over the years, many people traded in their old fashion style bikes for e-bikes and cars. But when I arrived, the bicycle was in the middle of making a comeback. Brightly colored dockless shared bikes by the likes of Ofo and Mobike began popping up in cities across China in 2017. And I was amazed to discover that you can grab a bike, scan the lock with your phone, buzz around wherever you please, and then dump the bike irrespective of your final destination. It seems so simple now that I can't believe that Western countries persevered with those clunky fixed station rental bikes for so long. I remember when Mobike first tried to break the UK market with a trial run in Manchester. It didn't go quite so well. There's understandably been questions about the sustainability of these bike share projects. I'm sure you've seen the photos of the massive graveyards filled with the bicycles at the end of their life cycle. But you can't fight the future and it seems like they are here to stay. Which brings me on to our next gift to the world, mobile payments. China, whilst not necessarily the inventor, certainly perfected the art of mobile payments. In 2013, Alipay overtook PayPal as the world's largest mobile payment platform, helped by the fact that credit and debit cards never really took off in China. Consumers essentially leapfrog from paying with cash to the convenience of paying with Alipay or WeChat. Anyways, let's rattle off a few more things that China gave to the world. I can't believe I've got this far without talking about traditional Chinese medicine. I've got to be honest, before I moved to China, I wasn't that familiar with TCM. But actually, it's a lot more common in the Western world than you may think. It's even available for free on the UK's National Health Service. Since moving to China though, I've been introduced to a whole range of interesting techniques that I'd never heard of before. But what interests me the most is the way it can be combined with Western scientific methods to solve difficult medical problems. For example, the scientist Tu Yo Yo spent years scanning through ancient texts to discover a cure for malaria that saved millions of lives. Nevertheless, TCM still remains a controversial topic, but it's something I wish to learn more about. Talking of divisive movements, let's talk about China's contribution to the vegan movement. No, seriously. Whether China meant to or not, it has made a huge contribution to the life of vegans, vegetarians, and those with lactose intolerance through the invention of soy milk, or its derivative, tofu, many moons ago. This high-protein, low-fat food is the answer to many people's dietary needs, and as veganism is certainly on the rise, tofu is set to go from strength to strength. Many health-conscious millennials are also switching from smoking to vaping, and I was surprised to learn that e-cigarettes were actually invented by a pharmacist here in Beijing. In 2003, Han Nick invented the e-cigarette as a safer way to inhale nicotine after his father passed away from lung cancer. But as much as China seems to contribute to the health of the world, it also seems to take away. The modern phenomenon, bubble tea, originated in Taiwan. And I'm not entirely sure what's in it, but I know damn well it ain't healthy. I didn't really understand what the fuss was about until I tasted it myself. It's quite delicious and most popular amongst young people. Much like our next gift that China gave to the world. Or some would say curse, TikTok. 
Love it or loathe it, TikTok has taken the world by storm, leaving apps like Instagram quaking in its boots. But it has also been embroiled in controversy with concerns over user privacy and overseas interference. It's the app popping up on phones everywhere called TikTok that may expose your children to danger. We may be banning TikTok. If you're watching from the future, then you'll know whether this was all a storm in a teacup and the platform is still going strong or whether it didn't survive the increased tension between East and West. When I think back to that little girl and those three words and how little I knew about China, it shows just how far my understanding of the country has come. As I've already hinted at, there is a lot of geopolitical tension in the world right now, and no matter which side of the fence you sit on, hopefully this video will show you the benefit of sharing our ideas, inventions, and discoveries for the good of mankind. Leave me a comment letting me know which Chinese invention has impacted your life the most. I'll see you next time.